Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 184, Betrothal Gifts These few days the Shen family was caught in a very strange mood. Because of Shen Miao's bestowed marriage, everyone seemed to be clouded with anxiety. Even though everyone was trying to express joy, but one could not hide the bleakness of it at the end. Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan would leave early and return home late daily. Most likely they were searching of ways to get this marriage rescinded but they returned without success. Upon some thought it was as so, since Emperor Wen Hua had concealed from the entire court of officials to write this decree, most likely it was to sever Shen Xin's intention of refusing. A monarch's words were not of a joking matter and words spoken were like water that was splashed. In the previous dynasty there was a princess who fancied as Yuan Yuan top scorer in the imperial examinations, but that Zhuang Yuan already had a wife but it was because of the phrase of monarch's words were not of a joking matter that he divorced his wife and married another. Every time when Shen Kaiyu saw Shen Miao, he would have a conscience-stricken expression and these days he would often gift Shen Miao some rare treasures. He only said, older brother do not have any abilities and can only find these playthings for you. Shen Miao was rather speechless with the Shen family's mood. She naturally knew that things were not that bad but she could not tell the Shen family so. If Shen Xin knew that Xi Jingxing's real reason, one feared that there would even more trouble. In Ming Qi she has to think about the Shen family but on the contrary, it was not convenient for her to take action but once she was in Great Liang, it would likely be much easier to do many things by using Zi Jingxing's name. She was relaxed but the people by her side all thought she was pretended. When she was reading in the room today, she saw Bei Lu run in a hurry and said, Young lady, fear and want you to quickly go to the main hall. The people from Prince Ruai residence had come to send the list of betrothal gifts. Shen Miao was startled. List of betrothal gifts. Zi Jingxing was really extremely daring. He obviously knew that the Shen family did not want to see him and even hated him but he actually dared to send the list of betrothal gifts over. Wasn't this adding fuel into the fire? However thinking about Zi Jingxing's absolutely unrestrained temperament, this was indeed something he could do. Upon reaching the main hall, one could see from afar that Lu Zhu Yan was holding a long thing and beside Lu Zhu Yan, Shen Kaiyu and Shen Xin was standing as they stretched their heads over. Lu Tan pursed her lips while Lu Ling's gaze became complicated. In short, everyone's was behaving very strangely. When Shen Miao stepped into the room, she only then found out that other than the Shen family, there was someone else standing in the room. After looking clearly at that person's appearance, Shen Miao almost choked. Shen Miao had seen this middle-aged man that had a big beard before, he seemed to be a guard that was always following Zi Jingxing and Kong Yang would call him Tai Yi. From a glance, one could tell that he was a brave person with martial arts but today he deliberately wore a red robe and on it. There were gold embroidered peaches and clouds. Most likely it was bring out the cheerful atmosphere but Tai Yi's complexion was dark so by wearing this attire, the heroisms were all covered up and on contrary, he looked foolish. Upon seeing her, Tai Yi bowed at her and said seriously, Wang, Prince Consort. Translator note, when the author refers to a position, I will be using Prince Consort. When it is referring to a person, like there, I will use Wang Fin's Ted. This time even Shen Kaiyu could not help but cough and glare at Tai Yi, don't call that inconsiderately. Tai Yi simply did not pay any attention to him. Shen Miao wanted to laugh somewhat unfathomably. Was Zi Jingxing trying to mock up the place? Even if one were to send a list of betrothal gifts, he should find a happy and festive looking married woman to read. The residence of Prince Ruai was so rich but only let Tai Yi, such a rough big male to come over. Wasn't this purposely making one laugh? Seeing that Shen Miao was being startled, Lu Tan called her, youngest Biao sister, what are you standing there for? Quickly come over to take a look at this list of betrothal gifts. She looked surreptitiously at Shen Miao seemingly very excited with it. Shen Miao walked over. The list of betrothal was exquisitely done. It was made from scented wood, sprinkled with gold dust and there was an emerald cat eye on the front. 
making it very valuable. Just this list itself was already expensive. Even though Shen Xin and wife were not vain people, Prince Rui doing so would express the value of Shen Miao to him and their expression became better. Lu Zhu Yan handed the list of betrothal gifts to Tai Yi and said, read it. In Ming Qi customs, the list of betrothal gifts would be sung by the male side. The longer it was sung, the generous the betrothal gifts were and the more honorable the female side would be. Tai Yi was obviously not accustomed to do such a thing so he flipped to the first page and sang dryly, one yellow daylily. Crab apple flower and begonia bed. One black wood three screen panel arhat bed. One set of yellow daylily pear wardrobe, bookcase and display shelving. One pair of black hide bin vases. One pair of conch inlay yellow daylily pear desk. One speckled conch yellow daylily pear money chest. One pair. The first page consisted of furniture which made everyone who heard it dumbstruck. Even if one were to put these many things in the current Shen mansion, it would not be enough. It was enough to place in three mansions. The second page was display items and one only heard Tai Yi singing. One incense aloe wood drew I. One mountain peak jade drew I. One tin paper lamp. One gold gilded table clock. One silver pocket watch. One green jade bamboo bonsai. One gold gilded hexagonal pot of plum blossom bonsai. One three colored 18 c scented serving plate. One colored dust jar for tea leaves. One barrel of pure privet wine. Bamboo and plum blossoms folding screen. Lu Zhu Yan and Shen Xin also raised their eyebrows. This Prince Ru Ai's list of betrothal gifts is rather generous. However, there was no time to be surprised as Tai Yi had continued to sing. The third page was daily necessities. Six boxes of boxwood combs. Two boxes of bamboo brushes. One red sandalwood table. Sandalwood cub for gurgling. Perfumed soap. Satin canopy. Glass bin hanging screen. Eight mandarin duck tasseled cushions. Everyone in the Shen family. Tai Yi continued onto the fourth page. One coat of silver rate. Gray rat. Sheepskin, pearl feather each and 12 different cotton wadded coat. 32 sets of robes of silk, satin and cotton. 1 fox hide satin jacket. 12 flower chiffon overcoat. 12 sets of clothes with 5 fortune, phoenix, and thousands of fortune and flowers embroidered. 30 pieces of top graded silk hide. 20 bolts of pattern brocade. 10 bolts of yun brocade. 10 bolts of shoe brocade. 12 bolts of different colored muslin. 36 embroidered satin quilt. 20 pairs of embroidered shoes. 40 pairs of jong silk socks. Lu Zhu Yan could not help but asked, This, this young brother, could it be that you have taken the wrong list of betrothal gifts? This, this is not right. How was this marrying a wife? This was like for a princess instead. One feared that even a princess would not be that detailed. Tai Yi spoke expressionlessly, it cannot be. There is only one list of betrothal gifts in the residence of Prince Rui. May Furin continue listening. He started singing the fifth page of the list of betrothal gifts. One tray of coral, gold leaves sent a dagger wood prayer beads four pieces of different types of green jade each four pieces of different type of white jade two pieces of different crystal accessories each strings of pears jadeite coral the sixth page he sang was on antique calligraphy and paintings four pairs of zijin porcelain bottles one pair of spring ballast vase one pair of chenhua ware bottle one blue glazed white plum blossom bottle the seventh page that he sang was all on the works of the four scholarly arts the eighth page that he sang was for servants and exclusive guards the ninth page was on horses and carriages the tenth page everyone in the shen family the more tai yi sang the smoother it was. He sang with one long breath that was even better than those older students in the theater in Zhaochun City. Every lingering note in every sentence made everyone feel as if they seemed to have taken a glimpse of large sheets of money. At the very end of the last sentence, he even suck in his tummy and breathe out deeply as he closed the list of betrothal gifts. Then he finally looked at Shen Miao. Storefronts and estates are not entered in the list of betrothal gifts because they are all in Great Liang. Tai Yi smiled sincerely, His Highness has converted all of them to gold, which amount to 10,000 jin of gold. 
one gen equals 500 grams, 10,000 gen of gold. Lu Tan could almost pass out. Tai Yi continued speaking. The mansions between the residence of Prince Rui to the Shen mansion were bought and will be included in it. Later on there will be someone who will send the title deeds over. He respectfully handed the list of betrothal gifts to Lu Zhu Yan. May Furin accept it. Lu Zhu Yan did not accept it. The entire room of people was as dumbstruck as wooden chickens. Lu Zhu Yan dared not accept it. That was 10,000 jin of gold and such a long list of betrothal gifts. Was their Shen family going to become the richest people in Ming Chi? Prince Rui did not move the entire treasury of Great Liang over, right? Prince Rui's brain was not till right. Shen Zin frowned, but it was Shen Kaiyu who reacted first. He hesitated before cautiously probed. Does your emperor know of the list of betrothal gifts that Prince Rui wrote? Tai Yu was blanked for a bit before remembering something and smiled. His majesty does not value mere worldly possessions much and moreover this is not considered a big amount. Seeing the thundering expression of everyone in the Shen family, Tai Yi continued, In the imperial family of Great Liang, gold, silver and pearls could fill up Ming Qi's treasury instantly but is considered like sand and fine soil in Great Liang. Everyone felt a deep veneration. It seemed that Great Liang was indeed rich and power. They were so such that the betrothal gifts could fill the entire treasury were only sand and fine soil in their view. Tai Yi again spoke. However may General and Furin rest assured, with regards to His Highness marrying young Lady Shen, Everything done is accordingly to Great Liang's imperial family procedure. Lu Zhu Yan and Shen Zin could only the place their hearts down. Even though they were not short of money, they still paid special attention to Shen Miao's matter and followed all etiquette. They were moved but also sighed as the betrothal gifts that Emperor Wen Hua gave the Empress those years back was not even half of Shen Miao's betrothal gifts. If it was a normal official who was marrying a wife, they naturally had to take into consideration and not gift more than that of the imperial family. However Prince Rui was not a citizen of Ming Qi but Great Liang, thus naturally one did not have to consider to this level. Even if the gifts were much more valuable than the imperial family, the imperial family would not say anything. Since it was so, Shen Miao's betrothal gifts should be the grandest in Ming Qi since the founding of the country. Shen Xin's and Lu Zhu Yan's heart finally had a trace of comfort. In any case, since the imperial decree could not be changed, Shen Miao was destined to marry to Prince Rui. Perhaps marrying this grandly and extravagantly was a wish of many young ladies and at least was a form of compensation for Shen Miao. Thinking of this, the ill will that they had of Prince Rui had dissipated a lot that they have more amiable attitude towards this big bearded man. Lu Zhu Yan asked, however why was the age card not sent over? Before getting married, one had to match all eight characters of birth. However because Shen Miao's marriage was special as it was bestowed directly by Emperor Wen Hu, this step was skipped. Tai Yi said, his Highness had already matched young Lady Shen's eight characters and it is a couple that is made in heavens, one that have been in the making for 500 years. Since Furin request for the age card, one will bring His Highness's age card over. The other party's attitude was filled with sincerity that one was unable to find anything wrong with it. Lu Tan could not help but asked. When will the wedding be held? There was no indication of when it will be on in the imperial decree. Tai Yi smiled. The marriage request memorandum has been completed. His Highness will be returning to Great Light after the end of the year so on the day of the return to Great Liang, it would also be the day that young Lady Shen will be married over and there will be a red procession all the way to Great Liang city gates. This was as good as marrying out from Ming Chi to Great Liang with drums and gongs beating all the way. The ceremony and traditions would start from Ming Chi and upon returning to Great Liang, the citizens would be officially announced. This was considered as lifting Shen Miao to a very high and distinguished position as it was the same as announcing to the everyone under heavens that Shen Miao had the identity of Prince Rui's consort. Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan exchanged a look and both of them saw the doubts in each other's gaze. For this Prince Rui to treat Shen Miao this meticulously, why did it look like? It was really sincere and committed to Shen Miao? How could it be possible? Shen Miao did not see Prince Rui for more than 
than a few times. Lu Ling's gaze was so dark that the light was barely visible. He kept his head lowered as he looked at the floor, as if he could see a flower. The different people in the room had different expression but Shen Miao's reaction was on the contrary bland. She nodded her head and said to Tai Yi, many thanks. After Tai Yi left, everyone looked at each other. Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan had discovered some abnormalities. If Prince Ruai's goal was to incite disharmony between the Shen family and the imperial family of Mingqi or make the Shen family unusable by the imperial family of Mingqi, then when the imperial decree was handed out, Prince Ruai had already accomplished his motive. Since he had already achieved his goal then the other matters were no longer important. So why did he have to make a big deal out of this and even if one had so much money, there was no need to do this unless Great Liang's treasury was too small and could not contain any more money and brought it to Ming Qi and gift them with both hands to the Shen family for dowry. Wasn't this doing unnecessarily more? It was Shen Kaiyu that noticed this point and said angrily, Isn't Prince Ruai like a weasel going to pay its respect to the Hen, sure to be ill-intended? By sending so many things, does he think that our Shen family is greedy for wealth? We are marrying a young lady off and not selling a young lady. With so much money, what would others think of the Shen family? Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan kept silent. This was also true. The imperial family would also be red-eyed upon seeing these betrothal gifts, not to mention ordinary people. What made others more amazed that it was gifted by Prince Ru Ai of Great Liang? So even if others had some thoughts on these betrothal gifts, they dared not act rashly and only looked on and who knew how many more people in Ding Capital would not be able to sleep. Even Shin Xin's opponents would vomit out blood. Lu Tan was in all smiles as she spoke, no matter the case, my Fu, younger sister's husband, is very generous. When a man is willing to spend money on a female, then that is considered a good man. Youngest Biao's sister have yet to marry over and he had already sent over so much things, if youngest Biao's sister marry over, the food, clothes and treatment would not be anywhere bad. Lu Tan's words had always been straightforward and direct and she did not know how to cover things up. It was just that the Mai Fu words was painful to the listener. Shin Xin covered his head, where can all these things be placed? That's right. Lu Zhu Yin started to get worried, there is not enough space in our mansion to put all these things. Just the storeroom itself would not be able to continue all the antiques and there are still furniture and textiles. One even have to build a granary in the residence to put all of it. Shin Miao wanted to laugh out when she heard it but said, didn't he bought all those mansions? After leaving. All those mansions are the Shen families. Just buy some guards and place all the things in. Or one could simply stay in the residence of Prince Ruai. Shen Xin shook his head. Yan King Lan is not a place that we can live at. That was the place where imperial families lived and if Shen Xin and them stayed there, who would know what would others think? Thinking of what Tai Yi said previously, pain flashed in his eyes, leaving after the year ends. Zhao Zhao, you, after the year ends. Shen Miao would be going to Great Liang. Everyone in the room became quiet. Separation, specialty separation from family was always an unpleasant thing. When Shen Miao saw it, she was afraid that they would be emotional and quickly change the topic. Prince Ruai had sent so much betrothal gifts. How does one calculate the dowry? Lu Tan was feeling a little thirsty and picked up the tea on the table to drink when upon hearing the words, she spurted out the entire mouthful of tea onto Lu Ling. However at this moment she was not concerned if Lu Ling's clothes were dirty but said, dowry, heavens. Everyone in the Shen family seemed to have been struck by lightning. Rationally speaking, how much betrothal gifts were sent would be around how much dowry was given. Even though it would not be more than the betrothal gifts, but it would not be much lesser than it. Else when the young female entered the husband family, she would be suppressed by others. If the dowry was substantial that was even more than the betrothal gifts then she would be well regarded after marrying over. Thus the more favored a young lady was marrying over, the closer the betrothal and dowry would be. There was no need to say that Shen Xin doted his daughter but this dowry. Prince Ru I gave the Shen residents so much betrothal gifts and if one had to give a close amount of dowry then even if the entire treasure of Ming Qi was emptied, 
it would still not be enough. Prince Ruai had gave the Shen family a difficult problem. In the night, Shen Miao sat under the light and remembered during the daytime when Tai Yi held the long long list of betrothal gifts and sang, she could not help but wanted to laugh. Zi Jing Xing was being too unruly. He actually wrote so much betrothal gifts down. Shen Miao held her forehead. If someone else saw this list of betrothal gifts, one feared that the Shen family would be envied by everyone in Mingqi. However at the end this list would definitely be known by others. It was just the matter of sooner or later. It was just that one did not know if Emperor Yongle knew of Zi Jingxing writing such a long list. As she thought about it, Shen Miao's heart was somewhat sad. In her previous lifetime when she married Fu Ziyu Yi, Fu Ziyu Yi did not gift such a generous betrothal gifts. Not to mention the imperial family, even officials list of betrothal gifts were better. One could only say that it was ordinary. At that time Fu Ziyu Yi said that the residence of Prince Ding was underprivileged and he himself preferred to be simple so there was no need to do it grandly and Shen Miao believed it. Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan feared that she would suffer from grievances and took out half of the Shen residence as dowry for her. Those dowry at the end were used to help Fu Ziyu Yi financially. Fu Ziyu Yi wanted to win over this and that and one would need to use money to buy over other heart. She had used all her efforts to plan meticulously and did the accounting carefully and even the antique calligraphies and paintings in the Shen residence were pawned for money. Now thinking about it, after marrying to Fu Ziyu Yi for so many years, it had always been her paying with the Shen family and Fu Ziyu Yi had never reciprocated. Although in the matter of emotions, everything was done willingly and reciprocation was not required but as time passed, one's heart would turn cold. It was especially so after ascending to the throne, when Fu Ziyu Yi treated Mai Furin and Fu Sheng generously, it was like a harsh slap to her face. Now that she was marrying to Zi Jingxing, she could not tell clearly how she was feeling in her heart. She was moved but it was not like as hot as per her previous lifetime but Zi Jingxing had gave her more than she had imagined. It even made one somewhat look forward to this wedding. The window was knocked twice by someone and Shen Miao looked up and saw Kong Yang outside before she opened the windows. When Kong Yang saw her, he first greet her, young madam. Master instructed this subordinate to bring you over. Shen Miao was stunned but in a flash she nodded her head straightforwardly. All right. Just nice. She also have things to say to Zi Jingxing. The different from the first time, this time when Shen Miao entered the residence of Prince Ruai. She recognized the way better but the one who suffered was still Kong Yang as he kept one carrying haystacks for Shen Miao to climb over the walls. In his heart he was thinking that the next time it was better to knock down all these walls to save all the troubles. When Shen Miao reached the residence of Prince Ruai, all the servants in the residence saw her and stopped what they were doing and respectfully called out, Young Madam, Shen Miao, Kong Yang said with joy, Young Madam. Everyone like you very much. Shen Miao only felt somewhat embarrassed and felt five different types of emotions in her heart. When she was led by Kong Yang to the inner courtyard of the residence of Prince Ruai, from afar she saw a snow white ball of fur running towards her and cheerfully bit the corner of her robes. A lazy voice sounded in the night, Zhao Zhao, come over here. Shen Miao looked up and saw Zi Jingxing leaning against the tree with both hands folded on his chest as he looked at her with a smile but not a smile. The white tiger at her feet was also not sure who he was calling. Shen Miao walked over to him and the white tiger followed with joy. This white tiger temperament was very friendly. Only after a few encounter, Shen Miao did not even tease it. But it even shook its head and wag its tail to her affectionately. If one did not know, one would have thought that this white tiger was raised by Shen Miao. She stood by Zi Jingxing's side and asked, What is it are you looking for me for? Zi Jingxing raised his brows, cloth cutting, cloth cutting? Shen Miao was suspicious but before she could continue to ask, Zi Jingxing suddenly reached out and pulled her into his embrace and lightly hugged her before letting her go. His actions were too fast and the hug was only for a short moment before he let go, making Shen Miao filled with annoyance but unable to say anything. If she said anything, it seemed like she was being calculative but if she did not speak out, 
it seemed that he had taken advantage of her. Zi Jingxing said, with your temperament, most likely you will not obediently embroider the wedding dress. I found the best seamstress but one do not know the measurement of your clothes. He looked up and down at Shen Miao and said meaningfully, after hugging one would know. Shen Miao, audacious, shameless. Zi Jingxing slowly replied, Oh, but you looked like you like it just now. Every time this person spoke three sentences, he would be able to make another angry. Shen Miao said in sarcasm, your means and methods are very high level that with one hug you are able to know the measurement. One must have done a lot of such stuff in the past. Zi Jingxing stared at her that Shen Miao felt her back shivering before his lips hooked up. Jealous? Then you can hug back. He opened his arms and put on a gentleman appearance. Who wants to hug you? Shen Miao said in despised. Yes, I have something to ask you. Zi Jingxing's eyebrows raised. What is it? The list of betrothal gifts was received. Why did you send over so many betrothal gifts? Shen Miao felt that it was funny when she thought about it. My Shen Mansion could not contain all those things and moreover you sent over so much stuff that the Shen family would not be able to afford the same level of dowry. Are you deliberately finding for trouble, just this? Zi Jingxing said heedlessly, I still plan to gift more. Shen Miao. She was just about to speak when one saw a guard running in from outside. Upon seeing Zi Jingxing, his expression became one of great difficulty as he spoke. Your Highness, there is someone outside. These subordinates were stopping him but it was like he had gone crazy and kept shouting your name. In order to avoid causing misunderstanding, one had to temporarily hold him down. So? Zi Jingxing asked. It is the eldest young master of the Count of Pingnan. Su Ming Feng. The guard said, Shen Miao's head suddenly went up. At this moment in the front hall of Prince Ruai residence, there was a young man that was tied up and his body was tied up as though it was like a scorpion and there was a piece of rag in his mouth as he glared angrily at the guards by the side and still struggled in vain. That person was Su Ming Feng. Su Ming Feng had instructed people to monitor the residence of Prince Ruai for a long time and also monitored the Shen Mansion and Princess residence. However the longer the monitoring went, the deeper the suspicion was in Su Ming Feng's heart. He suspected that Prince Ru Ai was that dead Zi Jingxing and even though this kind of conjecture was outrageous and ridiculous, as time went by, not only did the thought not disappear, it became even more profound. Zi Jingxing and Shen Miao had some relations and now Shen Miao was bestowed marriage to Prince Ru Ai. If Zi Jingxing was Prince Ru Ai then everything could be explained. Su Ming Feng had an attachment to Zi Jingxing's matter that could not be understood by others. After all this was a childhood playmate that he grew up with. He had learned a lot of things from Zi Jingxing and the importance of Zi Jingxing could be said that he impacted his entire life. No matter if Zi Jingxing was or was not Prince Ru Ai. Su Ming Feng had to personally investigate. He wanted to sneak into the residence of Prince Ru Ai and take a look at Prince Ru Ai when he took of his mask. At that time, the truth would be out. This was an insane move but Su Ming Feng felt that there was an undeniable reason. He was not that stupid that he went indirectly himself but instructed his people to make a declaration in the east and strike to the west. After the guards in front were distracted, he would take advantage of the chaos and sneak in. However Su Ming Feng did not expect that the guards of the Prince Ru Ai residence were so proficient and caught him in a short time. He was dispirited but there was more disappointment. At this time Su Ming Feng thought that since he had been caught, as long as he did not admit to it, nothing could be done. Thus he struggled desperately and even announced his family, hoping that it would attract that Prince Ru Ai's attention. Just as he was thinking, a bearded man who was clad like a guard walked in from outside and stopped in front of him. Su Ming Feng's heart could not help but tighten. The bearded man gave a look to the surrounding people and someone came over to untie him and took off the rag in his mouth. Master wants to see you. Come with me. 